good afternoon good evening good morning wherever you, all of you are uh, i'm based in india this is uh, i'm hemendra alwalia and uh, i'm a, an independent consultant uh, uh, connected with a few startups i'm also connected with a market research firm called idc um, i'm also uh, connected with 10xtd and this is a, a session this is a fourth in series session that we're doing uh, for 10xtd and uh, so my background uh, ladies and gentlemen is uh, i have about uh, 30 years of experience 30 years of professional IT experience i worked in advisory firm gartner for 12 years i worked in uh, product development companies i was a, uh, a chief operating officer for a fintech for a short while that's when covid just came in prior to that uh, i've spent uh, quite a lot of time on project uh, project program management uh, started my career with texas instruments so it's been quite a journey and uh, right now i am in front of you uh, going to be presenting on a topic that's um, interesting to me it's more on the on the role and talent side of things and uh, with that i think uh, let's get started so i'm just going to share my screen so uh, today's topic uh, ladies and gentlemen is uh, deconstructing the cio cdo cto role and uh, I'm also the CEO and founder of uh, my own firm which is Minervian Consulting. Uh, I'm very passionate about uh, digital transformation and anything and everything to do with digital more on the strategy side of things right but at the same time I also look into uh, areas related to to talent and uh, roles and those kinds of things and that's when 10x team reached out to me and said that okay why don't you do a session on 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 roles on specific C level roles. So with that uh, let's get started. Uh I'm going to be spending the next I would say the next uh, 45 minutes or so uh to take you through a brief presentation uh and then I want to leave some time for question and answers. I I do want to make it a bit interactive towards the end. Uh but if there's anything specific any pressing question that you have uh, uh that you have to ask then please you know you can stop me and you can ask me that question. otherwise i'll just keep going and assuming that all of you are uh, tuned in into what uh, i'm going to be talking about so great so uh, we are going to be doing uh, a bit of deep dive into some specific roles related to it executive c level roles essentially right so we'll talk about uh, the four phases of it executive leadership these are the, the four roles that are uh, of prominence at the moment of course there are you could argue that there 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 uh, uh, there could be many more but uh, i found these four pretty interesting and um, and they carry a lot of influence uh, we'll also get deeper into these specific roles as to what they are what they do uh, what is it required to be in that role what kind of um, challenges and and, and solutions uh, out there that that these roles face on a, on a regular basis uh, we will look at uh, some traits of c level it leaders uh we'll also look at uh, skill sets that are required to be successful in that particular role some key takeaways and then of course uh, question and answers right so uh, that basically is is the agenda all right so the four phases of it executive leadership roles right now we're talking about uh starting with the the cio role the chief information officer role and that's been around for many decades as you know and uh it, it has also evolved over the period of time as as you know industrialization has led to modernization and the role has has changed quite significantly from what it used to be uh, many years ago it is now and when and we look into it as we get into that specific role it has traditionally been uh the role has been represented with representation of that role has been with the senior business leadership and the board at least that's what the intent is uh intent has been uh but with rapid uh technological revolution new roles have come into play right and uh and because of digitalization and even because of covid that uh that you know essentially paralyzed uh, uh the industrial economy for the last 2 years uh has catapulted uh, some specific roles right and we'll talk about those uh but again after the cio but the cio role continues to be there uh there is the chief technology officer role which is uh, not that very old especially on the it side 
but now with the further proliferation of data as an asset and information management this has given rise to two more specific roles and those are uh, the chief digital officer and the chief data officer now both are referred to as cdo so in my presentation i'll i'll be distinguishing it you know with you know cdo digital or cdo data right and they're different um in many ways and uh, but but roles that are uh, more uh, related to uh, for example the cto the cio and the chief digital officer role uh, there are overlaps and uh, and we look at those as well uh, and then of course uh, one might say that okay uh, chief digital officer but you know i'm not a chief digital officer i'm a chief uh, digital and data officer so we have those mix and match uh, kinds of roles also where uh, information and data or information and digital are combined into into one role and that depends specifically on the type of industry the kind of work they do and uh, the size and, and all of that right so okay so let's start with looking at the chief information officer role right now i don't know uh, uh, i think a few of you on this call are probably cios or cdos um, chief digital officers i don't know if there are any chief data officers but uh, for those who are in this role this will be a refresher and more of a reinforcement of some key messages uh, those who aren't in this role and aspire to be then this will be a good learning and a good uh, way forward as to you know what is it is it will be uh, it will be an eye opener as to what this role is all about right so i think both ways uh, it should be benefit it is uh, the definition the cio is a leadership position tasked with creating and executing the it strategy for an organization balancing resources and technology through effective policy implementations with highest levels of governance right now note the key words here executing the it strategy now the it strategy for any organization usually lies with the chief information officer if that role is there in that organization right and that's because uh, uh the it strategy is supposed to uh be a bridge between you know how it is going to be how it is going to enable the business to, to in, in for it to meet it, its goals and objectives right it's a bridge and it's a path and that happens through uh, a mechanism called it strategy it's also about balancing resources and technology and cios do have uh, decision making rights and technology uh selection rights and, and and those kinds of things and at the same time there is policy and there is governance right so these are another other two key words that uh, the cio uh, has built into this specific role now let's look at the roles and responsibilities now these are uh typical roles and responsibilities you you know most of you would would resonate with these but they again there might be some that are possibly not mentioned over here which are you know very specific to that particular industry and and uh an objective so so the role of a cio is essentially to set goals and strategy for the it department right it's also uh, picking and using the right technology to expedite internal processes so it's a, it's a uh, it's a highly process driven role where uh, the cio uh, has to make sure that you know all the key processes are in place from an it perspective so that business is able to function smoothly right um, uh, over the years the role has become uh, or rather uh, uh in fact i advocate and many of my peers advocate that this role is should become more and more strategic rather than you know being very very tactical uh so that is always the you know how do you move up the value chain to become more strategic is is what um, um chief information officers should aspire for they also uh, do implementation of new systems they give advice to id professionals and other staff members uh they have uh they approve purchases of certain technologies equipment software they work very closely with with it providers and and set up partnerships they oversee the organization's technological infrastructure now again it depends there are some cios who are more on the infrastructure side there are others who could be more on the on the business side of things so there is a a bit of a spectrum in in this role as well uh, they manage and coordinate it related initiatives they keep track of technological developments um and they look at ways uh, how business can gain a competitive edge right they are also tasked with costs benefits risks so everything to do with information technology in an organization where there is strategy there is there are policies uh, there's governance 
right? And and all the things that are necessary to uh, enable the business to move forward you know, from a technology perspective. Uh, the background is usually a bachelor's degree in computer science or engineering, supplemented with an MBA. Now. Uh, I have seen uh, chief information officers who've come from both sides, uh, from the technology, uh, where you know you're a program manager, where well, you're a software developer, and then you, you know you, from that track you 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 become a CIO, which 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 would be a more of a tech technical kind of CIO. Then you also have business kind of CIOs who have a business degree, like an MBA or some sort of a management degree, which. Uh, uh, which, which makes them into a business kind of a business CIO, right? So, so we have those as well. The average tenure of a CIO, at least in India, is usually eight years, uh, which is fairly long compared to uh, Europe and Middle East, where it's about 3.7 years. And we'll see some statistics in the next slide. Uh, also, uh, typically here in this part of the world, uh, at least the, the CIOs that I know and the CIOs that I've spoken to, they usually have some sort of a uh, an application implementation background, like in the early days it was ERP, CRM, digital technologies, and so forth. Whereas uh, CIOs in, in some of the Western markets, Western developed countries, you know, there it need not be that you have uh, an ERP or CRM kind of background. They come from different backgrounds as well. So it's just the nature and that's, that's the way it is. The skill sets needed for uh, for being successful in this role are uh, communications. It's very important to for a CIO to be able to communicate both upwards and downwards uh, on the kinds of projects that he or she is implementing. They need organizational skills. Uh, they need to have a certain amount of technical depth. Of course, uh, there's budgeting and planning involved, so they require those kinds of skills. Project management. Uh, and program management, uh, relationship management, team development. These are all kinds of skills that are required uh, in order for a CIO to be successful. So it's just not uh, it's just not technology that we're looking at. We're also looking at some of the softer side of things, right? The soft skills, we call it. New expectations um, align and leverage emerging technologies. So today, CIOs are challenged in, in some way or the other to become more strategic, more uh, you know, business value driven, more outcomes driven, and we're seeing that that shift. Right? And uh, and because of digital, there's also a cultural shift uh, in terms of you know how um, how they can expedite and accelerate you know digital initiatives. So so we see that as well, and in this uh, specific role. Now, if you look at the Indian CIO profile, and uh, this is a slide that I had presented uh, in my previous presentation as well. So I thought it was a, it was a good set of um, stats to, to share. This comes from the 2021 Spence, Spencer Stewart report. So it's slightly dated, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I think it's uh, the information is still relevant here. So in India, uh, we see the average age of CIS to be around 46 years. And if you look at uh, the graphic over here, um, you know, it depends on the kind of industry you're in. Uh, the age profile, you know, is, is, is accordingly mapped. So, for example, if you're in, in consumer, finance, healthcare, um, I mean, you've got CIOs that are, you know, uh, under 34 years of age, you've got 35 to 39. So, so the color coding is shows where most of the CIOs are and at what age. So, for example, if you look at uh, CIOs who are above 60, I don't know if anybody is above 60 on this call, typically you'll find them in uh, industrial kind of a setup, right? Because, because of the lot of experience that they possibly carry. Um, but if you look at uh, the tech sector, you've got uh, about 8% or so that are under 34. So you've got a young um, uh, crowd, you know, at in, in, in the tech sector. So this is more on the uh, the age and the uh, and the sector uh, kind of a split. Uh, Indian CIOs also carry uh, cross-industry exposure. So about 63% of them have worked in two or more uh, uh, industries, right? So here again, the breakup is consumer, finance, healthcare, industrial, media, and technology. And you see from this graphic that uh, the average is about 63%. So, uh, so for example, in consumer, you know, it's it's about four. Those CIOs typically have. Uh, work in you know, four different organizations, so to say, right, on the consumer side. 
international experience uh, this is a bit less uh, so indian ceos don't have too much of international experience but still nevertheless it's about 13% and uh, uh, again it's uh, broken up uh, sector wise so uh, so you can see over here that uh, the maximum uh, international experience are uh, in healthcare it looks like right so i think those ceos that are probably in the healthcare sector have uh the maximum uh, overseas experience and that's also essential so i would advocate that you know if one could get an overseas experience is it's always good uh the average tenure uh, like i said earlier is about 8.4 years in india um and uh, uh the mean average is about 3.7 so it's quite a big of a, of a difference there All right so that was about uh, the CIO uh, profile and the age and roles and responsibilities now what could be those typical priorities for a CIO right now you'll find uh, i mean as you google you'll find you know you'll find gartner you'll find infotech you'll find itc all of them coming out with and you'll have other exotic uh, you know uh, services uh, subscription services that have their own cio priorities i found this one pretty interesting so infotech is a is a pretty upcoming uh, and credible research firm and uh, and 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 here if you see you know so they they've broken it up into just five big categories right and 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 the flavor actually resonates with cio priorities from other agencies as well so if you look at here uh the number one is adjust it operations to manage for inflation right so we are seeing a shift in terms of uh, a bit of a downturn um the cost of things have gone up so uh, so there is a uh, so that's one area where cis need to concentrate in in year 2023 uh, which is uh, about business value vendor management cost and budget management so those are the kinds of things that you know in that particular bucket is where your your it operations would need to be adjusted to to uh, uh, to fight off inflation the it inflation so to say uh the second is uh, prepare your data pipeline to train ai right now there is a lot of uh, emphasis on data and, and artificial intelligence and cis that are tasked with these kinds of things uh, have it as a as a high priority item for them uh which is you know things like data quality data architecture business intelligence and reporting so um significant amount of focus is is going to be put in in that in that bucket the third bucket is uh, go all in on zero trust security so security in cyber uh, plays a, a a very prominent role today uh, for cios um, especially those that have uh, security mapped into them um looking at the security you know but some organizations have cisos uh, but uh, those that don't uh, and and the cio is is responsible then that's that's a high item on the agenda the fourth is uh, engage employees in the digital age so employee engagement employee experience and we've seen that right with the the great resignation and um, uh, also right now uh, the great layoffs and and all the things that are happening um, and of course uh, covid taught us uh, things that taught us few things that were you know critical for uh, for the welfare of employees and how to make sure that your employees are all well taken care of from all aspects you know remote working health and well-being and, and all of that so employee engagement is critical and then finally uh, shaping the it organization to improve customer experience so again in 2023 employee experience and customer experience are going to play a very prominent role because uh, it's all about the customer at the end of the day right so if you're in a highly customer facing industry then customer experience is something that is of paramount importance because uh, digitalization is is changing the game and uh, you find similar uh, ci priorities for from other uh, you know research and advisory firms but i wanted to show this so that um, it gives you an idea of uh so so what we've done so far is uh, we've defined what a ci role is the roles and responsibilities uh we looked at uh, typical you know profiles uh, from from an age and experience point of view we looked at the kinds of work that cios you know, uh, uh the kinds of work that they do and will be doing in 2023 the focus areas especially we're going to be changing gears now to chief data officer right now this is the other cdo that i talked about 
uh, the uh, chief data officer is a leadership position tasked with driving data management strategy that includes data governance, data quality, and data strategy, such that the organization organization can take data driven decisions. I've never seen the, the 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 use of data so many times in one sentence, but essentially what it's saying is that anything and everything to do with data, uh, the buck stops uh, with the chief uh, data officer, right? And uh, because uh, of rapid digitalization, um, uh, there is eventually, I mean, there is a lot of data that's being generated as well. Uh, well, data was being generated earlier as well, but it, it wasn't being put to use, right? Now with, uh, you know, with artificial intelligence capabilities and other uh, things that are available, uh, analytics, you know, data becomes uh, the make or break for, for any organization, right? So if you look at uh, roles and responsibilities uh, for a CDO uh, on the data side is, is organizing, storing, analyzing strategic and operational and production data, right? So it's all about the management of data and you know, where it comes from, how is it used, where does it go, uh, what value it provides, um, what all things you could do on the data is basically you know, one of the key roles and responsibilities for a CDO. Also monitoring the management and flow of data through its life cycle. So the entire uh, life cycle of where it came from and where it finally is going to end up uh, um, is, is, is another um, um, point to be noted here. Planning, creating and maintaining data warehouses and other repositories, establishing corporate procedures that adhere to data protection and privacy, uh, data analytics into corporate processes, um, generating revenue from data gathered from various sources utilizing cutting edge technology and that's that's a so the last bullet point is is uh, uh, is a key point to note is generating revenue right so we're not just talking about uh, data you know providing some sort of uh, being informative about certain actions that need to be taken it's also about uh, how you can generate revenue right how you can generate additional revenue using all the data that you have and the CDO is tasked with that uh, if you look at the vital stats, typically the background uh, that these folks carry is usually an advanced degree in computer science, supplemented with certifications in analytics and many other things. Right? They usually come up the ranks through um, being in the area of data science, analytics kind of a role uh, in, a, in a managerial capacity before they actually step into this specific role. The CDO role is becoming increasingly critical. And as it, when I we just when I you know, just a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that it's um, it's, it's becoming more prominent now, um, um, because uh, because a lot of organizations uh, have adopted this data-driven enterprise strategy uh, initiative, right? Which means that all the data that they're collecting, they they want to make sure that it's um, it's, it's put to use. Uh, so that the organization is able to either de-risk de themselves or generate more revenue or improve customer experience or improve employee experience and, and so forth. Now, this is a tough road, right? Um, uh, the unfortunate thing is that um, the, the CDO role, the average tenure is about a little less than three years. And that's because uh, the role carries a lot of hype, right? And sometimes outcomes don't come out, right? So, which is why uh, CDOs don't stick in that in, in that role for very long, unless you know, unless uh, uh, the initiatives that they've uh, put forward in the organization are yield results, you know, in in in, in the form that uh, is uh, specific to that role. Skill sets needed again would be communication, collaboration, data science, analytics, relationship building. Again, this is a C-level role, and you will see that all the uh, the C-level roles have communication and collaboration as as one of the key soft skills. Right, this particular one requires data science um, depth as well and relationship building and so forth. Usually, we have seen that this role reports to the chief operating officer or chief financial officer or the CEO, depending on the industry, the size, uh, the criticality and so forth. So what do we see in the future for, for CDOs? Well, the CDO role is becoming prominent with expectations of AI and ML and business decision making skills. So AI ML is, uh, is now and everybody's talking about it and, um, and, and organizations that are that generate a lot of data 
um, for example like financial services retail um, in order to put that data to use you know one would one would employ a, a cdo right so, so that you know this cdo organization can then you know churn out all that data and make it put it to good use and uh, and make it strategic for the organization now uh, that was the cdo uh, let's look at some cdo stats over here uh, so 21% of the world's leading 2500 publicly traded companies had its cdo with c level or c minus 1 reporting in 2021 which is quite significant uh, cdo presence correlates with strong financial performance growing value of data and the tendency of data rich organizations to meet CDO, CDO. So what it's saying is that uh, you know organizations that are, are reporting strong financial uh, metrics and, and they're growing quite significantly um, and they're generating a lot of revenue usually employ CDOs. Europe's leading companies have more CDOs than North America driven by appointments in UK, Switzerland and Germany. So we do see a lot of CDOs in the overseas markets. Uh, but in India as well, we have. So we, I'll take you that slide where we'll see some, some well-known Indian CDOs. Regardless of industry, CDO growth is still being driven by some of the largest organizations. And that's a uh, that's an observation that's, uh, that, that's there in, in the sense that um, larger organizations tend to uh, employ CDOs because they've got the budgets, they've got the, uh, they've got the, you know, the mechanism to uh, to work with data and put it to some useful use. Right? If you look at uh, some stats over here, so proportion of uh, apologies for the small font. Uh, this is a graphic that I've taken from from uh, a source. Um, so proportion of global uh, top companies with a CDO, as you can see, the highest is is Europe at the moment, uh, with over about forty two percent, followed by Middle East. Um, Asia Pacific uh, is about 10%. So in this part of the world, you know, about 10% of the organizations, publicly traded organizations probably have uh, a CDO in place. Uh, proportion of global top companies with a CDO by industry, right? And if you look at the, the stats over here, uh, this is actually showing what was there in 2021 and then the percent increase in 2022. And again, 2021, 2022 are around COVID period. Um, and just coming out of COVID, and obviously, you know, because of rapid digitalization, uh, there was rapid data generation, and uh, which required in some cases to have the right kind of focus. And and CDO was is usually there, has been there to provide that focus. So if you look at here, uh, let's take household and personal products. In 2021, you had about 30% uh, of the companies uh, having a CDO. We had an increase of 24% in just 2022. So now it's about 54% of household and personal product companies have a CDO in place. Similarly, banks, banks and insurance generate tons of data. Uh, in 2021, this was about 43% for banks. And that uh, in the year 2022, about 8% was added. So it's about 51% now for banks. Similarly, 51% for insurance. And so forth, as you can see, it's um, um, you know, uh, 2022 you had a rapid rise of uh, of CDOs. Um, what is a CDO, a Chief Digital Officer? A Chief Digital Officer is a leadership position tasked with helping the organization to drive digital transformation through advanced technologies. Right now, digital transformation is probably one of the most abused words right now because everybody talks about it. Right, and uh, but nevertheless, a CDO, Chief Digital Officer, uh, is a high agenda item, right, on on his or her plate, is to drive digital transformation and using advanced or emerging technologies, um, and, and and you know, uh, creating you know, specific business outcomes. So the roles and responsibilities of a CDO are um, they use digital technologies to improve customer experience, employee experience, corporate branding. Uh, they drive efficiencies, um, they oversee uh, organization-wide activities for, uh, for digital transformation. So anything and everything to do with digital transformation is usually looked after by a CDO. They work with cross-functional partners, they develop and implement a digital strategy, um, they dismantle silos, they encourage a digital mindset, 
so it's a it's a it's a prominent and a very important uh, c level role um the monetize data gathered from various sources using cutting edge technology the integrate data analytics into company processes now uh, companies that probably don't have a chief data officer sometimes the chief digital officer is tasked with uh, with analytics so that's why sometimes analytics you see under chief digital officer um they find new prospects for digital commerce they create revenue streams now the role of the uh, cto gained a uh, high prominence in i would say around 2016 right so that's when you had a sudden burst of cdos um the cdos are prominent even today but it's a little less because uh, it's being um, overshadowed by you know the chief data officer and in some cases the cio role is also Uh, become transformative and you know sometimes the cio is doing a lot of uh, digital work you know again it all depends on the kind of organization some organizations have both cios and cdos chief di- digital officers some have only one and you know the roles get you know uh, uh, connected to to that particular role a higher role so vital stats uh, background is usually an advanced degree in computer science or engineering supplemented with with, with a management degree but it need not be CDOs, uh, uh, and that's an interesting thing about a CDO is that it doesn't have to be; they don't have to have a very technical degree. They come from all walks of life, basically. Um, the CDO role is relatively new and customer-facing and highly business outcome-driven. Right? Um, it, it, its maximum effective effectiveness is when there are large digital transformation programs underway, and that's where a CDO really makes a difference. Right? um it's uh it's usually there in organizations that uh, are uh, transforming so for example like legacy organizations now legacy organizations have a need uh to digitally transform so they'll probably employ a a chief digital officer um so they uh, they have experience in implementing advanced technologies like internet of things ai ml industry 4.0 etc the kinds of skill sets needed for uh, a chief digital officer um, are somewhat similar to the earlier ones that i had shown communication influencing and collaboration technical depth innovative and disruptive mindset so innovative and disruptive mindset is probably what you didn't see in some of the other roles and a cdo uh, should have that kind of a mindset where uh, he or she is looking at innovative ways of providing solutions Uh, for his or her company and and uh, and sometimes you need to think out of the box right um the reporting is not fixed as it depends on the type of transformations underway and the organization space what we see as future of cdos chief digital officers is to have technology marketing communications business acumen and executive presence right we're seeing some of it already uh but uh uh but that's where you know that's what the future is 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 holding for them is to become more and more business centric right um some of the well known uh, chief digital officers that are out there right now uh again i'm not going to go through through all of them this is not a this is just a sample list just to show you that a cdo uh, uh to show you the uh, the the uh, industry space uh to also tell you about uh, where they've come from right for example uh, uh, clay johnson of yum brands he's the chief digital officer he's been cio in other companies so so for him it was a cio to cdo transition uh, whereas uh, for best buy cdo you know he worked in consulting in some other organizations uh, for loreal you know asmita worked in in marketing and media she's she, she's been marketing and media head in other organizations uh for some have uh, have uh, uh financial you know cfo experience for example the cdo of infinium technologies constance uh, she's had she's held cfo positions in other companies so that's a cfo to cdo transition um in india you know we've had uh, hermin who was the cio of atel uh, now she's the cdo of bt Similarly, with uh, Rima, she's now CEO of Remoto Corp. Previously, she was into supply chain. So, as you can see, that uh, the CEO role need not be a very, you know, the path to becoming a CEO need not be very IT. 
uh, IT centric. It could come from other areas as well. So some other examples uh, like Jagdish Ramaswamy. He's the CEO of uh, Hindalco, and uh, again, Hindalco is an Aditya Birla company. They're going through some massive uh, digital transformation because they've always been a very traditional legacy organization. So they they need that kind of profile to to drive certain digital projects, right? Uh, and so forth. So again, uh, uh, as you can see, they, they, are, they come from different walks of life. Right? All right, so that's uh, about chief digital officers. Now let's look at uh, the final role, which is uh, the chief technology officer. Right. So, so far we've looked at uh, uh, the CIO, we've looked at uh, chief data officer, we've looked at chief digital officer from roles and responsibilities point of view, definition, um, what they do, what kind of background they have, uh, what kind of skill sets they carry. Well, we'll look at skills, skill sets a little later, but typical uh, soft skills that they all uh, should be having. So here we're going to look at the chief technology officer. Now, the definition of a CTO is, uh, it's a leadership position tasked with addressing technology requirements, opportunities, challenges in an organization, having skill sets as a technology architect, innovator, and solution expert. It's quite a mouthful. But basically what a CTO is, is anything and everything to do with technology uh, in an organization. Hardcore technology is where uh, a CTO usually plays a key role. Uh, roles and responsibilities of a CTO. So let's look at some of these. They undertake overall technology strategy in an organization, including companies' technology status, objectives, advancements, right? So you might argue that, yeah, but even a CIO does that. Yes, that's true. A CIO sometimes will also be looking into this. But again, depending on the nature of the company, the organization, the sector, um, there, there are some differences and similarities in, in these roles. And we'll see that you know, going forward. Um, CTO oversees uh, R&D activities, they manage intellectual property creation, management, um, they match the organization's technological resources to its short-term, long-term objectives, they participate in executive committees, right, uh, to connect technology goals and technology goals to organization and department goals, um, they uh, help with technology professional recruitment, onboarding training and so forth. And so there's a typical, again, not a not an exhaustive list of roles and responsibilities, but typical ones that we see. Some vital stats on this role. The background is usually an advanced degree in computer science or engineering supplemented with a, with a management degree. So pretty much similar to what we've seen in, in the other roles. Um, the CTO role is prevalent where technology plays a vital role. So, uh, so, so places like uh, banking, retail, telecom, product development, right? So here, you know, technology plays a vital role and that's where you find a lot of CTOs uh, being employed. The key difference from the CIO role, the CIO and the CTO role, uh, is that uh, CTOs deal more with external vendors, right? It's an external facing role, so they deal with vendors, they, they deal with customer experience, marketable technologies, etc. Uh, the kinds of skill sets that they require again it's a c-level role so obviously communication and influencing and collaboration is is given but uh, they do require the technical depth uh, they need to be innovative and solutioning mindset because at the end of the day it's the cto that is solving problems for the organization from a technology you know perspective right so so that is is, is a skill set that's that's needed is problem solving skills some organizations have both cio and cto uh, CIOs are usually for you know, internal services, policy administration, implementation. CTO is for technology depth and so forth. The future prospects for uh, the CTO role is that it's here to stay for a long time, right? Because as you know, as we're becoming more and more, as organizations embark on the digital journey and embrace and implement technologies, uh, you know, it requires that kind of a profile to. to to drive uh, you know, specific projects, initiatives, strategy, and so forth. All right, now this is, this is from uh, from an IBM report uh, which came out uh, uh, not that long ago. And uh, so what they're saying is that look, you know, within the CTO again, there are some there are three different types of CTOs, right? CTO roles. So you've got the the technology steward, you've got the operational expert, and you've got the hybrid hero, right? And uh, they are 
different and similar in some ways. Uh, so the technology steward is uh, uh, so these kind of people who are from this who are this kind of of a CTO, they seek inspiration and insights from outside the organization. So they bring a lot of outside in perspective. Uh, they describe themselves as organizational and ecosystem integrators, right? So they they also you know from a responsibilities perspective. They uh, um, again, this is uh, what you're saying here is based on on a survey that IBM had done uh, through another agency, and they said that 88%, you know, uh, said that they they uh, their responsibility is to work with the C-suite and uh, board advisory, but they have other uh, areas as well, which is you know SDNC, cybersecurity, data privacy, and, and so forth. Most of the time, that uh, a technology steward. Uh, spends time in I mean, from a, from an investment point of view is uh, data privacy. Fifty percent of the time goes into data privacy, C suite. You know, Thirty nine percent is is C suite and board advisory and so forth. The second type is the operational expert, right? So here, these are people who seek inspiration and insights from inside out, right? And uh, they do seem to portray the lowest level of collaboration with CIOs, but they report the highest ROI in tech investments. Again, you know, there are sometimes there are situations where there is CIO CTO tussle, right? And you probably find that in in this kind of a profile. And here, you know, from a responsibilities point of view, 78%, you know, uh, is with you know with the C-suite and advisory, board advisory, 61%, you know, with innovation. Uh, but from an investment, from a time investment, they spend a lot of time on cybersecurity, innovation strategy, data privacy. So they they seem to be a bit tactical. Right? Uh, the third is the hybrid hero, um, which is uh, and these are people who seem to be CIO in disguise as they wear both the CTO and CIO hat. Right? They report the lowest technology effectiveness but highest collaboration with the tech and with the tech maturity. And uh, again, uh, you don't see uh, you see C-suite and board advisory at, at the bottom, but there, you know, the key responsibility is SDLC, cybersecurity innovation. From a time management point of view, investment point of view, time investment point of view, it's more on SDLC, workplace enablement, and so forth. So these are people who are CTO, come CIO, you know, together kind of a thing. Right? So. I thought this was interesting and uh, worth sharing. So that's why I put from a priorities point of view. Uh, so what do CIO, CTOs typically work on, right? Um, so they continuously, you know, focus on emerging technologies as a um, as businesses move toward for, forward with rapid digitalization. And obviously, cloud is the big enabler, right? But uh, the question that was asked uh, uh, was uh, which of the following emerging technologies will most help deliver the results you need over the, over the following periods in the next two to three years, which is short term, or the next five to 10 years, which is long term. And in the next two to three years, uh, obviously, you know, it's 66% uh, said cloud computing is, 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 is where, you know, the focus is followed by IoT, followed by advanced analytics, followed by artificial intelligence. That's, that's about, about the period that's, that's now. But going forward in five to 10 years, Artificial intelligence is going to be the number one, right? AI, and we're already seeing that happening in some cases, followed by IoT, because again, IoT is all about sensors and aggregating data from sensors and, and putting it to use. Sensors are always going to be there, uh, followed by cloud computing, advanced analytics. So there's a shift in ranking in, in terms of focus and technologies, uh, but not but not by that much, right? So there's a whole list of um, of technologies that uh, that CTOs are have as as priorities uh, for two to three years and five to ten years, as you can see over here. Now, something about the CI uh, about the CTO and CIO partnership, right? Again, this is uh, come from the from the IBM report, and uh, here uh, two questions were asked, right? So, first question was for CTOs and CIOs. The question was asked to CTOs and CIOs. And it was, the question was beyond the CEO, which of the following executives will play the most crucial role for your organization over the next three years? Again, a sample size of 2,500 CIOs. And uh, obviously they said, you know, the question when it was asked to the CTO, they said, yeah, I mean, they themselves, you know, 61% said that they themselves play you know, the most important role after the CEO. Similarly, with CIOs, you know, they said 
65% said that, yeah, they themselves are uh, the next most important role after the CEO, right? Uh, but when the question was asked to the CEOs, right, the question asked to the CEOs was, who from your C-suite team will play the most crucial role for your organization over the next two to three years? Sample size of 3,000 uh, CEOs. So when that question was asked to CEOs, they said that 50%, 57% said the next important you know, role is the CFO, followed by CEO, followed by CIO and CTO. So as you can see from here that the CIO, CTO, you know, plays a very dominant role in uh, the future of the organization, right? Um, so depending on who you're asking, it's, you know, if you're, asking, if you're talking to CTOs, they'll say that after the CEO, they are the most important role. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the message here is that uh, that it's in the top, you know, it's in the top three, right? So that's from, from a role uh, importance perspective. From a collaborative sweet spot perspective, uh, here uh, it is, uh, the question was, in your organization, which C-suite roles do you interact with most, right? Um, so. If you look at CTO and CIO, let's look at CTO, right? So CTO, if you look at here, the CTO spends uh, most of the time uh, with CEO, 55%, followed by COO, followed by CISO, followed by CSO. If you ask the CIO, uh, they spend most of the time, uh, again, with the CEO, right? Um, followed by CD, COO, followed by CISO. So again, basically what it's saying is that both the CTO and CIO, influential, super important, super critical for, for the organization. And they work very, very closely with uh, with the C-suite, especially the CEO. But they also have some common ground, right? Uh, uh, so here, the question that was asked is, in your organization, who owns each of the following responsibilities? And clearly, you know, technology strategy, technology operations, technology architecture was clearly with the CTO. And clearly, uh, supply chain management, workforce engagement, end user experience, uh, data governance, compliance, and so forth was clearly with the CIO. But there are some shared roles or shared responsibilities. Uh, and those are things like innovation strategy, data privacy, ecosystem strategy, software development, cybersecurity, right? So this is where uh, organizations that have both roles, uh, this, is, these are, this is the common area where you know, both are uh, tasked and both are supposed to be working on. So there's a clear demarcation of what a CTO is supposed to do and what a CIO is supposed to do. But in some places there is a uh, a bit of an overlap, and this is what you know. This is what it, I'm showing here as shared responsibility. Now we've seen, uh, we've looked at uh, all the four roles, their their definition, their roles and responsibilities, skill sets, and and basically what they do and from where they come from where they come, right? Now let's look at some common challenges for the C-level. And again, this applies to those those four roles and it could also apply to some other C-level roles as well, right? So the first is, uh, is technology alone will not solve the digital adoption problem, right? Uh, one needs to think about people, process, technology, and leadership, right? And all of the soft issues that like accelerate adoption. So, um, so the challenge is that, you know, sometimes I think that, yes, technology is, is what they should be focusing on, um, but uh, it's not just that by itself. There are other things with it. Cultural transformation cannot be ignored. Um, again, um, and this is a very critical piece because you may have the best technologies in place. You may have put all the processes, but if culturally the organization has not moved forward, then, then that's a big problem, right? So change management needs to be inscribed into the overall strategy to drive vision, beliefs, values, principles. Uh, and this uh, and this change management is, is not an afterthought, but it has to be built into your strategy. Um, you know, whether you're a CIO, CTO, you know, chief digital officer, or chief data officer, uh, you will be dealing with change management. You will be dealing with cultural transformation. The third is uh, lack of measurement and KPIs is a recipe for failure. So uh, you need to have uh, whatever uh, activities that are uh, carried out by these specific roles. Defining KPIs is super critical because they provide feedback, effectiveness, they provide transparency for measuring success. Uh, and if you can't measure, then you know it's, uh, it's, it's as good as not doing it. 
So you need to have KPIs need to definitely be part of your um, uh, focus area. Lack of bold leadership commitment and buy-in can derail digitalization progress. Um, uh, which is why it's important that uh, you know the rollout of vision and strategy needs to start at the top right through active engagement with employees communication plays a very key role and um, again here you know i've seen organizations where uh, things have gotten implemented but uh, but again you know because because that top buy in was not there or the commitment was not that strong you know things you know tended to fizzle out and you know lose its way somewhere you know as as things were being getting implemented, you know, the focus goes out if, if, that, if that leadership commitment is not there. Do think about um, design thinking and customer journey mapping, right? And not as an, not as academic activities, but as solutioning activities, right? It's because they help in the solutioning process as it as it addresses end user needs uh, and is also a success criteria in, in the digital transformation journey, right? Uh, the seventh is lack of agile methodology and mindset can counter progress in digital transformation journey. So agile methods, agile mindset definitely has to be there. Collaborative approach, basically what we're trying to say, um, that breaks down development into phases with many unknowns and moving parts. So collaboration plays a very key role, uh, working with you know all key uh, stakeholders and um, uh, with your entire value chain, right? Which is helping you drive the digital transformation. Reskilling and upskilling cannot be an afterthought um, because right now, you know, the problem that a lot of organizations are facing is talent, right? Talent is scarce. Um, they're looking at different ways of uh, bringing in the expertise, either, you know, uh, upskilling within the organization or tying up with uh, learning agencies. Uh, essentially, continuous learning is what, what I'm trying to say is that that is something that's needed and that will keep the talent in place, which is a vital ingredient for digital acceleration and adoption. Traits of a successful uh, C-level IT leader. Uh, first is uh, becoming a business leader, right? Uh, now, again, this is uh, applicable to any uh, C-level IT leadership position, right? Whether it's a CTO, CIO, Chief Digital, Chief Data. Becoming a business leader is, is, is of paramount importance. And what does that mean? That means learning the business inside out by understanding what the business strategy is, going beyond meetings, uh, you know, with people, with, 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 with your C-level, but getting down to the core, understanding, uh, you know, what the core issues are, what the challenges are, meeting customers, partners, employees, talking to employees, looking for real issues, understanding what drives customer experience, taking up initiatives that generate revenue, and getting on boards of other companies, uh, uh, some of the very successful uh, um, C-level leadership uh, people, they, 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 they are on advisory boards of other organizations as well. So uh, that's something that, that you know, one should aspire for. The second is becoming a change agent, right? So partnering with business leaders to build trust. Um, uh, IT as a consultant versus service provider versus partner articulating the why for every IT initiative, the why certain things need to be done, uh, and always looking at, you know, uh, how it can generate business value, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, we are all working for business outcomes, and if, if, if IT doesn't uh, generate that kind of a perception, then it's just looked upon as a, you know, as a, as a support center, right? Um, uh, uh, having an integrated plan that highlights risk dependencies beyond IT. So now, you know, we're not just looking at IT, the wider ecosystems that are there and typically CIOs and other C-level, they, they need to look at um, beyond their, their organization and looking at ways of collaborating and, and, and generating results. Third is becoming a talent scout. So reimagining how to attract talent, you know, building up internal talent, Talent is something that is uh, of critical importance nowadays because um, at times it's uh, it's available. I mean, there's ample talent at some times, you know, there is, uh, there's a huge shortage, right? So it depends on um, what work is, uh, what work needs to get done and what industry you're in. Becoming cult figure <coughs> for your team, right? So you want to create that, that aura around yourself. And that could be done through building communities of interest within your teams. Uh, inspiring and motivating your team, being prescriptive in raising the potential of the team, 
understanding you know the strengths and weaknesses of, of your of your team members and and how to you know raise the bar and uh, and help them become um, help help your team become performance driven right B- building a high performance team reducing autonomy and empower them to take decisions so you know we are saying that you know um, equipping them with with enough tools and, and and knowledge and information that they're able to make their own decisions treating failures treat failures as learning and celebrate success right so um, the failures are always uh, a learning experience and one needs to celebrate success as well so these are you know some of the four big ticket items that uh, uh, are you know traits of a transformative c leader c uh, level id leader now skill sets needed uh, they can be many but these are some of the, the the most important ones obviously you need tech skills for the role so whatever role that you're in whether it's cio cto you need specific tech skills for the role you need a use cases approach skill set which means that you know you're looking at um, uh, not just having technology for the sake of technology but it's actually helping address certain use cases right so it's that that mindset you know that use case mindset uh obviously you need problem solving skills you need very good communication skills uh communicate you know upwards and downwards um ability to tell stories you know i need to be a good storyteller because again it's all about uh influencing and um, uh you know making making a point you know putting a point forward and 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 getting you know the right kind of energy levels to get things done um leading with empathy you need to understand what actually is uh, you know how are your customers feeling and being in their shoes uh, or for that matter your employees uh, understanding their challenges issues and how you can help them inspiring curiosity collaborating at all levels earning trust uh, being vulnerable that's another uh, uh, key uh, skill set because that you know being vulnerable means that you know you are approachable and you are um, look everybody is not perfect right so it's no point having a an image that um that you know it's it's a fail proof kind of an image it's okay to be vulnerable at times uh, because that invites a lot of um, uh, empathy and trust and uh, and so forth from 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 people around you uh creating inclusivity you know being a future thinker being a having a big picture approach right uh, which is all about uh, fine you know we are doing these kinds of projects and programs and initiatives but uh, how does it fit into, into the overall picture the overall strategy of the organization and that can only happen if you have a big picture kind of an approach and finally benefits realization driven everything has to have benefits it needs to generate value in some way or the other um, so that's uh, an important skill set to have so this is my final slide so where does it all where does all this lead to finally right some some takeaways well the cdo cio cto's they they can all directly contribute to the digital transformation process and and they do the cto you know once again he monitors he or she monitors emerging technologies manages client relationships uh, develops policies and procedures you know works with everything and anything to do with technology in that specific organization the cio concentrates on managing the organization's internal it infrastructure services policies and governance right um strategy the it strategy uh, the chief digital officer uh, uh was developed to have a more global perspective when looking at people processes technologies required so the cdo role uh, like i said you know it's uh, it gained prominence uh, high prominence uh, in about 2016 17 time frame but it still continues to be there but usually it's there with some of the larger organizations right or with legacy organizations the chief data officer is uh, gaining high traction and its importance is only growing because now it's all about data and how data is getting used to deliver results uh, in actuality the chief digital officer is also uh sometimes known as chief digital information officer and like i said earlier uh, you know, there are you know the name right so you sometimes you have a chief digital and analytics officer or chief digital information officer they pretty much do somewhat similar kind of work you know? uh companies are learning that creating a digital advantage requires a company wide effort and knowledge and input of executives so definitely it's a you know you're dealing with a wider ecosystem 
and finally uh, there can be conflicts right so sometimes things are not very clearly uh, demarked but there are sometimes uh, overlaps and like i said earlier a cio cto sometimes there is an overlap so one needs to keep uh, track of that and executive leadership needs to manage and set expectations and drive sensitivities within those roles so that is uh, essentially uh, uh a primer on uh, on the roles if anybody has any questions or anything we can we can talk about it or if anyone wants to share anything we can talk about it so i see a question over here uh from tina uh, in case of mna situations in an organization which of which of the c level play a vital role in mna in which uh in and which of these c level roles proves to be in danger of dissolving or danger of being redundant so mna typically uh, again is a is a business activity so you would normally have mna specialists uh, who are there to look into to these aspects but mna activity uh, involves uh, sometimes uh, from 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 these four roles uh, yeah the cio cdo sometimes can get involved because if the two organizations are coming together the two cios need to talk uh, there needs to be some sort of a common ground from uh, from an IT landscape so sometimes you will have you know you will have CIOs and CDOs chief digital officers uh maybe chief data officers in some cases as well so again it all depends on uh, what kind of an MNA is happening but typically uh, uh an MNA is a, is a business kind of an activity so you will have business people looking into it um i would like to thank you all very much for taking the time out and uh, listening to uh, this uh, primer on on the c level roles uh, stay tuned for uh, the next session will will uh, i'm still working on putting something together with 10x td and if anybody has any any specific requirement uh, you know uh, uh, please write to me or, or 10x td uh, we could do some workshops on on on, a, on an area of interest of yours So 10x CD and Minervian can definitely assist you on that. With that, uh, I like to wrap it up. Thank you once again, and uh, have a good day ahead. <laughs>